Hi all, I thought I'll do a quick video to uh, show my VPX 10.8 settings. Um, I play with frame pacing and I uh, recently figured out that the OpenGL version works better for me just because they have so much lower latency than the DirectX version. Um, so I'll kind of demonstrate that for you and then also show you a little trick uh, for the OpenGL version. Uh, to get that working. So, okay, so first let's look at the DirectX settings here. Um, basically, um, I keep it on default. Uh, I have it on window and that's uh, I've got a 1080p monitor. Uh, ball rendering, I don't use ball trails or any of those things. Uh, uh, I don't need to play around with that. Uh, performance and troubleshooting, max ambient occlusion. Um, in older tables, you might have used it, but yo, since I've been involved the last two years or so, it's always been recommended to disable it. And if you do put it on, you often get artifacts on the table, uh, especially around the flippers or so. Then max reflection mode, if your system can handle it, um, dynamic is the best. It just looks uh, really amazing. Uh, Fishtails is probably the best example of that, so we'll take a look at, at that. Also, if you don't have performance issues, then um, keep max texture texture dimension on unlimited. Um, yeah, I'm fine. I don't have really have issues. I have force anisotropic texture filtering on quality. Um, I have it on here. Uh, I can have it in the NVIDIA settings, like I have some of my other settings. Uh, but uh, yeah, for some other reason, I have it on here, and it works fine. Then, yes, importantly, I use frame pacing uh, because it gives you the lowest latency. And frame pacing was basically kind of designed to uh, level the playing field between players with different uh, refresh rate monitors so that uh, they all have more or less the same input latency irrespective of the monitor refresh rate. And it works really, really well. So. Uh, the maximum frame rate, I keep it on zero and then it defaults to your monitor refresh rate and mine is 165 and the maximum pre-rendered frames, uh, I just keep it on zero as well. And then yes, uh, interestingly enough, anti-aliasing and all that, uh, since about half a year ago, I have it all off and I'll show it, uh, explain it to you later when I go to the NVIDIA settings. So I'll demonstrate for you on fishtails, uh, the different latency measurements okay there we go you can see it runs really well uh, if you look at the render uh, uh, latency then it's hand then you can see my monitors 165 Hertz and it runs at 165 fr uh, frames per second and the latency of the monitor is 6.1 milliseconds um, so if you have a 60 Hertz monitor then your latency will be more like 16 milliseconds or so, which is yeah, quite a lot more. And then in the past, um, with uh, V-Sync or any other um, option, um, you would also your input latency would also be the same at 16 milliseconds. So that's where frame pacing comes in. It lowers the latency to much, much lower. So this is the DirectX version, which isn't as good as the OpenGL version, but you can still see it's much much better so my latency is around 0 0.5 milliseconds and the max is around 2 milliseconds or so so let's run the OpenGL version uh, with the default settings and then you'll see something the DMD is gone <laughs> and that's a problem so uh, there's a little workaround for that and if you go to the video graphics options um, you can keep everything exactly the same um, except you change this to one pixel less and that kind of forces um, it to go into window mode there we go and now if you open up the latency you can see it's much lower um, well not as low as it usually goes but you, you still get the idea um, usually it's around 0 0.2 or so for me 0 0.3 and uh, the max is definitely under one millisecond now it's running close to that uh, but it's still lower than the two uh, so yes yeah, just see for yourself but it, it definitely makes a difference okay and yeah 
place smooth as butter. Okay, so let me demonstrate some other things. There's a really cool F12 menu these days. And with that, you can change your point of view. Uh, let's quickly look at mine. Um, I, playing on desktop, I like to kind of have a zoomed in view like I have here. I set my inclination between 45 and 55, depending on the table. Um, usually if a table have flippers and you have more action at the top of the table, then I'll have the inclination closer to 45 or so, so that you can see the top flipper easier. And then the field of view, um, I have it between 40 and 45, also depending on how much is happening either in the middle or the top of the play field. Can't go wrong there. And then, yeah, I use the Y and the Z offset just to kind of zoom the table in so that it's just the active play field showing. And then what else do we have? Some information about the table. There's the rules for the table. And then, yeah, these really awesome table options. Um, the refraction, refraction probe settings. If you look at the top there uh, of the uh, boat ramps, you can see the refraction really nicely, um, you know, the blurred effect looking through it. And uh, basically you can uh, put it off for better performance like that uh, or you just have the full refraction on um, I don't have performance issues so I can just keep it like that then dynamic reflections uh, same story um, you have to have it on in VPX but then yeah yeah you, it looks really amazing and um, I'm glad that I can run with it and then yeah last thing I also want to point out for you yeah is that a flipper tricks difficulty is something new implemented on this table I play on a gamepad and it actually makes a difference um, if you uh, switch the setting as to how efficiently you can do the flipper tricks. So if you have gold leaf uh, switches on your cabinet, then you have much uh, faster uh, click and or press and depress uh, compared to your controller. So you just physically can't move the controller button quickly enough. Um, with a controller and some keyboards, some good keyboards you can, um, to actually do the flipper tricks efficiently. So, uh, Rolf Bauer uh, W put uh, really nice uh, touches in uh, so that uh, keyboard players can now also do really nice flipper tricks. Um, so, let me quickly demonstrate that for you. Um, hopefully, I can do it. Okay, so let's see. So, there really nice little fine flipper control like that let's see you do a post pass oops uh, it was a good post pass i just did a bad shot there's a nice life catch let's see if we can do a nice backhand flick oh almost but you you get the idea uh, so you have fine control and let's just compare it if i now kind of put it on the well that's the same as the f12 menu if you go uh, pre press quit and adjust the camera so let's just go there and we change it to standard optimal and take a look again to see what happens okay okay let's try and do the same trick you see <laughs> the ball goes much further because I just was the same amount of of action there let's try again I'm gonna try a really fine little control and yeah <laughs> Okay, there we go. So you'll also find if you have gold leaf switches and you put it on the keyboard setting that you'll actually have too much control and it will be a bit annoying and you'll struggle, struggle with post passes and so forth. Okay, let's look at my NVIDIA settings and then we're done with this video. So my NVIDIA uh, settings, um, I'll just highlight a few things. Um, ambient occlusion, I have it on performance. Um, and it's a traffic filtering application control as I showed in VPX I have that on anti-aliasing um, FXAA that's the only anti-aliasing that I have on um, and it's it looks like uh, it works uh, well along with this next setting that I'll point out and that is this yeah which is a deep learning uh, dynamic super resolution and that is basically uh, NVIDIA's own upscaling technology. So basically, when you uh, 
play the table, it gets rendered, or play a game, it gets rendered at a much, a much higher resolution, as you can see there, 2880 by 1620, and then uh, uh, displayed at your screen's resolution. The end result is though that you have a much sharper and cleaner image, and that uh, it has a lot less jagging, so it's almost like a, a built-in anti-aliasing. Um, so that works really well, and it's got a really low performance hit. Uh, so that's why I don't use the VPX anti-aliasing settings anymore, or the upscaling uh, there, or anything like that. Okay, let's look at some other settings. Smoothness is just, um, basically, I prefer to have it a little bit softer, uh, the view. Very important, low latency mode. Keep it on ultra um, to, uh, to get the best uh, latency for your... Um, controller and your input uh, max frame rate I have on off and multi frame sample AI again have that on off um, let's see what else power management mode I uh, have it on prefer maximum performance and then uh, refresh rate yeah I just keep it at the maximum um, and then the last thing I want to mention is vertical sync so if you run frame pacing it is very very important to have any other sync mechanism off so make sure it's off in a vpx obviously on frame pacing make sure it's off here in the nvidia settings and then very important make sure also it is off in your monitor uh, setup so if you have a free sync or g-sync monitor uh, make sure that uh, v-sync uh, make sure g-sync or free sync is off else it will interfere with frame pacing and it won't be able to do its job efficiently so frame pacing isn't just to lower input latency, it's also if you have a drop in frames to ensure that your gameplay is still smooth. Uh, and it can't really do that job well if uh, other sync mode is active. So yes, uh, this uh, is mostly uh, just a quick overview for desktop players, but obviously all of this is also relevant to cabinet players uh, or, or two or three screen players. Um, but with some other um, added issues, potential issues, um, like the B2S server or so, uh, that can have an impact on performance. So uh, I set up a frame pacing frequently asked document, which I linked in the description, and you can take a look at that. Uh, there's a troubleshooting section, and it might help you kind of figure out if you have some issues. So uh, thanks uh, for watching and hope it's uh, helpful in some way. I know there's always lots of confusing things as VPX is developing at such a rapid rate. So it's not always clear what to do, uh, but we're very grateful for uh, the amazing advances that's been made uh, over the last uh, two years or so. Um, yes, so thanks all and uh, hope to see you again sometime.